Hello. Now we're doing the review for placement test two. So hopefully you've already taken placement test one. Now you're getting ready to take placement test two and we're gonna do a quick review just so that you can get this accomplished. Okay, so conversions. First of all, we're gonna talk about converting from one set of units to another. To start with, there are two things I'd like to give you advice about. Number one, use a four function calculator. Don't try to do this in your head or on paper. Just use a calculator. It's gonna be much easier. Use a table to find the conversion rates. You can find them online. Um, I'll be giving you some as we go along, but get a table. It makes life much easier. All right, the easiest way to perform conversions is to write out the conversion process as a giant fraction. Now I know you, they are kind of scary, but don't worry, it is easier than you think it is. So I'm gonna convert, I'm gonna flatten this out a little bit. I'm gonna convert five, sorry, I wasn't writing as a pen yet, apologies. Five yards. I got to convert it to inches. So I know this is my giant fraction. I know that in one yard, there are three feet, right? So now if you notice, I can cross off yards and I'll have how many feet? Well, I also know that in one foot, there's 12 inches. So again, I can cross off feet and I'll have inches. And it's easy as that. Now all you have to do is, these are three fractions, you're gonna to multiply together. So it's gonna be five times three times 12 over, in this case, they're both ones. So that makes life easier. So the answer is 15 times 12, which is 180. Okay, and include your units that straightforward. Now this one's a little more difficult because we're switching from meters and feet. Okay, so convert two feet into meters. So we're gonna start with two feet. Now I need, okay, look, I've got inches. So I need to convert my feet into inches first. So in one foot, I have 12 inches. So now I have inches. So I can use that to convert into centimeters. So in one inch, I have 2.54 centimeters. All right, so now I've got centimeters. Now I also know that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. All right, so I can cross off my centimeters and now I have meters. So to get my answer, all I do is multiply straight across. So I'm going to have 2 times 12 times 2.54 times 1, so I don't have to write that down, over 100. I plug this into my calculator and it'll give me, pop me out the answer, right? So it's 24 point times, sorry, times 2.54 divide 100. And my answer is 0 0.6096 uh, meters. All right, so it's simple as that. Just treat them like this big gigantic fraction where you're crossing off the different units to get the unit you want. Once you've done that, multiply straight across. It becomes really easy. All right. Solve for a bare variable. You will be asked to solve for a variable by this test. So let's go over solving for a variable. First, when you solve for a variable, you have to peel the expression around it off like the layers of an onion. Your variable is in the very center and you've got to start peeling. Okay, you do this in the reverse order of Jimdas. So we're peeling off the additions and subtractions and then we peel off the multiplications and divisions and then any exponents or groupings. All right, you won't have to do any exponents or groupings. It doesn't get that complicated. All right, so we're gonna do examples. Solve for H. Well, the first thing I do is I write down the equation. 
Now I'm going to subtract, I'm taking off a, sorry, that didn't look very good. Minus, take it off K, R, or sorry, K off both sides. That gets rid of it over here and the other, it's now over on the other side. All right, now I have to get rid of this two because my grouping is in the very middle, so I have to leave it for last. So I get rid of this two by dividing both sides by two. And there I have it, R minus K over two. And now I can get rid of the parentheses because I got rid of everything that was outside of it. All right, so now I go back and I start over and I get rid of my addition. So I'm going to subtract the M All right, and there it is right here. See, look at that, minus M and missing on this side. Now I have to get rid of the three fifths. So I'm gonna multiply, whoops, I'm gonna multiply this by five thirds. Okay, and all I do, yeah, you could be really fancy and multiply that in and you don't need to. This is sufficient. Oh, this should be gone. Now H is equal to five thirds times R minus K over two minus M. All right. Proportions. Okay. So one of the things you're gonna test it on is also proportions. When dealing with a proportion, two fractions that equal each other, there are a couple of things you need to know. First off, is it a true proposition? Yes if the diagonals multiplied are equal. So AD has to be equal to BC. If not, then it is not a true proportion. That will be a question. Is this a true proportion? You have to be able to say yes or no. That's how you do it. We solve it by using the above property. We set AD equal to BC, All right? So if we are solving it, we have a variable. So we're gonna do five times 21 equals seven times X. Now we solve for X by dividing both sides by seven. So X is five times 21 over seven, which is 15. Alrighty, so that's proportions. Now we're gonna talk about percents. The percent sign represents divide by 100. When given a percentage to change it into decimal, move the decimal point two places to the left. So 30%, one, 2.3. 5%, 1.2.05. 1, 120%, 1.2, 2, and now it's 1.20. To make a percent a fraction, put it over 100 and simplify. So 45% becomes 45 over 100. Now 45, whoops, sorry, 45 is five times nine and 100 is five times 20. So I can now cross off the fives. I have nine over 20 is my answer. All right, now writing up a word problem, simply translate what means equal X, sorry, what means X, is means equal sign, percent means a decimal, of means times. So what is 10% of 45? Well, what is X is, is equals 10% is written as 0.10 of is multiply 45. Straight over, just a translation. Now, what percent of 250 is 75? Well, what is X percent is, what percent, that's my X, of is times, well, that should be 250, I apologize, that should be 250, is 75. The answer, Okay, then you take the answer to this and you're gonna to have to multiply it by 100 to get the, your percentage. All right, reading graphs. All right, when reading a graph, take note of the labels of the axes and the lines. This is gonna tell you a lot about what it's all about. Next, think about what is the picture they're giving you. 
It will be about the relationship between two things. For example, month of the year, January, February, March, and rainfall. Or price of an item and the supply of the item. Or what year it is and the win-loss record of a sports team. Who knows? It could be anything, but it's going to be comparing two things. Okay, also note the units. Often things are graphed in thousands of units or millions of dollars or something other than one. So you got to watch out for that. So your answer might be four on the graph, but maybe it's actually four million or 400,000 or 4,000. Who knows? So you've got to pay attention to what the units actually are, what it's representing. Okay, now there's also some interest questions. All right, we have simple interest is I equals PRT. I is the amount of interest earned on this principle at this rate for this many years. Principal investment is your P or loan, principal invested or loaned. So that's the initial amount. R is your annual interest rate. T is the time in years. All right. If a person invests $900, alert, that's my principal, at 6%, okay, this has to be written as a decimal, 0 0.06, annual, that's what we want, interest rate, how much simple interest would they earn in five years? So T is five. So we simply plug it in. I is equal to P times R times T. The answer is $270. See, not too bad. Hi. <laughs> okay, rates. Now, rates are ratios. One unit of something else, right? So, uh, uh, miles per hour, we have dollars per pound, rates per ounce, that kind of thing. A unit rate is has a denominator of one. So if it's miles per hour, it's how many miles per one hour? If it's uh, dollars per pound, how many dollars per one pound? That's what they want. It's all a unit rate means. So to find the unit rate, 30 in this case, 32 ounces for 260. What's the price of the item? Well, price per ounce. So it's 2.6 divided by the 32 because I want price, the dollars, per ounces, so the ounces go on the bottom. Money over ounces. You get $0.08 dollars or eight cents. 25 pounds for $35, you take the 35, you divide it by 25, and you get the dollars over pounds, because that's what you did, dollars per pound, because that's what you multiplied. All right, now the other thing you're gonna see is some perimeter and area and volume. So perimeter, that's the distance around the outside. So for a triangle, it's going to be A plus B plus C. The perimeter of a rectangle is, we have the width, so we have two of those, and the length, and we have two of those. Now for a trapezoid, you have two bases, all right? These two would generally be the same length, but your bases, B, uh, C and D, would be of different lengths. But you add them all together and you're gonna get your perimeter. For a circle, the perimeter is called the circumference, and we know it as two pi r or pi d, r being the radius and d being the diameter, which is two radiuses. All right, let's look at the area. Triangle. It is basically, if you look at a rectangle, length times width, base times height, it's basically the uh, half the area of the, tr the rectangle this thing sits in, right? So if I have that, I divide it in half, that's my triangle. So it's half. That's where the half comes from. Base times height in any triangle. If this is the base, the height is the perpendicular bisector, okay? So it's the height. Now, for a trapezoid, what we do, I'm gonna exaggerate the sides so it 
it becomes easier to draw. All right, what we do is we chop off one side, one of the angled sides, and we rotate it around, flip it to the other side, and it turns this into a rectangle. Okay? And now to find the area, we would take the length of this side times the length of that side. Well, this length is the height. So over here, that's our H. And this length is you add the two together, you add this little guy and the big guy, actually all the way out to there, and divide by two. So that's why we have the one half because it's really that over two. That gives us that other side. All right, and in a circle, we know it's pi r squared. All right, volume. Volume of a prison is the area of the base times the height. And for a rectangular prism, the area, again, times the height. For a trapezoidal prism, area of the base times the height. Now, for a circular prism, it's area of the base times the height. For a sphere, we have it slightly different. Okay, so that's the end of our review for chapter two.